Hi, welcome back. This is uh, part two to a build to finish up my cabinet here. Uh, in the last video, we went ahead and built the doors, which again, were just chunks of wood cut the length and uh, put some hinges on and some bumper pads. Now in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and build the drawers. So uh, if you're interested in that, stick around for the back. Right, to start our build today, we're gonna be batching out all of our pieces. Uh, each drawer is gonna consist of six separate pieces. You're gonna have uh, a left and a right, a front and a back and a drawer front and obviously a bottom as well. So let's go ahead and get started and start batching some of these pieces out. Like the majority of my builds, I work with reclaimed or repurposed material. These drawer pieces are already dadoed and I'm gonna start processing them and getting them down to the dimensions that I need for my build. Next step in the process is to go ahead and thickness the material. This is three quarter inch material. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to five eighths of an inch. We're only going to worry about the outside of it because obviously the inside is already dadoed, so that's it. Now the overall size of the drawer is going to be 17 by 12. And those measurements also include enough room for the rails to actually slide underneath, which you'll see later in the build video and obviously the overall depth. So let's go ahead and process those next. Now one thing I like to do when I'm putting together drawers, uh, specifically in an order, is I like to batch everything. So I know that for every one of the drawers that I make, I'm going to need a left and a right, and I'm going to need a front and a back. So I like to put everything together in a set, and what this does is this helps me keep everything organized, and helps me keep everything together as I want it, and in the specific orientation that I wanted. Obviously we have dados and in having the dados and having a left and a right you want everything to end up exactly where you want it to be in the end. So now I've got everything batched out. Now in order to join these together uh, I'm going to do box joints or finger joints and to do that I'm going to use my Matthias Wandel uh, box joint jig and we'll look at that next. Alright, so I got my box joint jig out. Now I'm not going to go into depth in this video on how to set this up, but the gist of this basically is you have to take your sets and like for this particular here you have your left and your right and we're going to butt those up completely to the side fence and the back fence and then you have your front and your back. Now in order obviously for finger joints to go together they have to be offset. So what that requires us to do is make sure the orientation is the same. So I have the dados on this side, so obviously the dados for the front and back will be on this side. But what we have to do, particularly for this setup, is we need to offset, we have to offset the front and back by one saw blade width, because that's how big my dados are gonna be. In another video, I'll go into depth on exactly how this setup works and how to set this up so you can see it in action. But for now, I'm just gonna set it up. We're gonna go ahead and run. It. I think it's important as you're building drawers and especially when you're getting into box joints and well any kind of real true fit work you got to stop every once in a while and make sure that your measurements are correct and everything like that well lo and behold I've made a mistake um, the drawer actually fits in the slot just fine but it's actually I didn't accommodate for the little sixteenth of an inch or three thirty seconds on both sides for the actual drawer slide so now I have to come up with a creative way to fix that and I think what I'm going to do is do that on the table saw and take off a blade's width just on that lower half here before I get everything uh, situated. But uh, anyway, measure twice, cut once. The next thing we have to do now is to start cutting for the bottoms. Now my material already has a dado in it and I went ahead and measured that out uh, with my other tool here, my measuring tool, my depth tool and that equals out to a quarter inch. So the measurement on the inside of this is uh, 10 and 3 eighths plus a quarter plus a quarter be right around 10 and 7 eighths. I'm probably gonna stay a little weak to that just so I have a little bit of wiggle room, but uh, that's all you really gotta do. Just make sure you add whatever depth of your dado is for your bottoms. Let's cut those next. Another 
other thing that's really good to do is to do a, a dry assembly just to see you know how everything is going to line up and give you an opportunity to actually you know clean anything up that's you know maybe a little off or isn't quite you know cut through the whole way or you got a little sliver but again just get again it just gives you an opportunity to finish and to see exactly where things are going to line up um, see how your panels are going to fit see how everything else comes together make sure you have a solid a solid uh, drawer here when it's all said and done So far, I haven't been doing too awful bad. And everything's lining up pretty nicely. It's going to be a lot of fit and finish on this one. But. So that's just another step in the process of making drawers. All right, now that we've done the, uh, the dry assembly, we're going to go ahead and start gluing everything up. Yeah. And uh, this is just a, you know, nothing crazy here. We're just smearing glue and everything as much as we can. You can use a nice little glue, you know, a nice little thin strip of wood. Uh, you can also cut some thinner curves if you want for box joints and use those sliding out. These are pretty thin, so I'm just going to do what I'm doing here. Try to make it a little easier on myself, but that's what we're going to be seeing. Just going to go ahead and so I will not bore you with all this, but this is what I'll be doing for the next 5, 15, 20 minutes. Just gluing everything up. So when I come back, we'll show you a little bit more. All right, now that the boxes are all glued up, I'm going to let them dry for a little bit, and then we will make the cuts for the spacing issue that I had earlier, uh, that I made the mistake on the measurement, and we'll correct that, and then we should be able to start installing some drawers here real quick. So here's how I came up with the fix uh, for the miscalculation. I'm actually notching about a saw blade's width off just enough to fit. And here I'll spin this around here so you can see it. So we can actually accommodate the sides of the rails and it's just enough that they slide in now and it doesn't hit. And I got the wiggle room that I need. Uh, so that's the first fix of it. So that's where we're going to leave it for now until I get the rest of it done. So there we go. That's how I'm fixing it. All right. So for this particular type of drawer slide, I actually have to notch a little bit here on the very back. Essentially what we're going to take out is this little piece here on both sides. And that's so the drawer can slide in. Uh, just the way that it needs to. So that's what we're going to do next. We got our drawers in. Everybody's sliding real nice. Our, we, our little uh, saw blade width that we took away there to accommodate the side of the rails worked. Next up, we got to do some drawer fronts and then this project will be complete. Now, our drawer spacings are four and a half inches by 12 inches. So in keeping with the half inch reveal, we're gonna go ahead and make the opening, five, the drawer front five and a half inches by 13 inches. That way we can maintain the half inch reveal the whole way around and we're going to cut those next.
we've got our drawer fronts cut and now we're going to attach them. Now the way I've figured out to attach them is I'm going to need this little block here that will sit right on the bevel on the back which will give me my distance from the bottom up in order to maintain that half inch reveal. And then as far as the sides, I'm just going to eyeball them. I mean, we're only talking three-eighths of an inch, well, actually a half inch altogether. I'm just going to eyeball that. So that's the way we're going to set this up. So let's go ahead and uh, put the fronts on. We've only got four of them to do. All right, here we go. Cabinet's all done. Got nice doors on there now. I also have got plenty of drawer space. Now I can fill those up, which is gonna be got a few more projects for individual uh, little boxes to hold my chisels and tools and things that I need to have more relatively close to myself instead of on the other side of the shop. But all in all, nice, fair, easy project. Uh, lining the drawers up on top of the doors is kind of a pain, so if anybody has any ideas on how they do it or can direct me to another video, I would sure love to see it. I'm, I'm always interested in seeing other people's techniques, but there's another one in the books, another build for you. Thanks for watching.